Now, I must confess that today's video is actually not on a question that any of you guys have asked, but um, I thought it was important because today is election day here in the United States. And I know a lot of you are viewers from other countries, uh, so maybe this video doesn't necessarily pertain to you, but I do know that a lot of you guys do live in countries that you do still have the right to vote, you have the ability to vote, and you may live in a country where you have a two-party system. And here in America, this is very, very predominant in our politics. We have two major parties, the Democrats and the Republicans. Now, um, I personally will, I will tell you who I am going to vote for in today's election uh, at the end of the video. So if you want to know that, you can stay tuned and I'll let you know. And I really don't plan on having this video last too particularly long. So you could probably just hang on for a little bit uh, and hear what I have to say. And then uh, uh, you'll find out a little bit later. And I'm not telling you guys this is who you need to vote for, but I'm sure some of you guys are a little curious. So I will let you know. So today's topic is actually something that uh, I I really kind of have had a real heavy heart about it for a while when it comes to politics. And um, just full disclosure, I have been a, re a registered Republican for a very long time, but I recently uh, changed parties. So I am no longer a Republican, but I'm also not a Democrat. So I'll get into that a little bit later. But the thing that really weighs on on me the most is this consistent um, desire by everyone to perpetuate the two-party system. And I think that ultimately with a two-party system, America loses because you only have a yes or no. You only have a flip of a coin. You, everything has been so polarized to be either this or that. And if you weren't with me, you're against me. And I think it's created a pretty tremendous amount of divisiveness. And the really, the only solution to this would be a third party, some other alternative, and even more than three parties. I think that there should be four or five because I think we should all find a party that we can feel comfortable with and belong to because they follow our principles and our ideals. Now, it reminds me of a, a meme that I've been watching going around here on Facebook, and I think it's pretty funny. So it starts out with, I'm voting for Hillary Clinton. And then someone says, well, wait a minute. You can't do that. She's a liar. She's a cheat. She's a thief. She'd stolen money for paying for weddings and you can't vote for her. Okay, well, then I'll vote for Donald Trump. Well, you can't vote for him. He's a liar. He's a cheat. He's a, you know, he's a thief. He's a rich guy. He's an egotistical windbag and you're just a right wing, you know, you're just a, a right winger. Okay, well, then I'll vote third party. Well, you can't do that. You can't waste your vote on one of those other third parties because, you know, it, it won't really count. It'll just make the other person win. All right, so then I won't vote at all. Well, you can't do that. You have to vote. It's your duty as a citizen. So, I mean, really, <laughs> you're trapped, right? You can't, you can't do any of those things without getting some sort of criticism. So if, you're, if you can't really do any of those things without receiving some sort of criticism, you might as well just do what you want, right? One way or the other, you're going to be criticized for it. If you make it public, which I'm doing here, I know that I'm going to get some blowback. I'm going to get some feedback uh, that, you know, some of you guys are going to dislike what I have to say, and that's perfectly fine. And, and I don't mind political discourse. That's one of the wonderful things about uh, living in America is that we can have disagreements. Uh, I would prefer that if you do have a disagreement, though, that you don't turn it into a trolley type of uh, response back. I'd like to keep it civil. Um, I, but I don't mind disagreement as long as there is clear, um, you know, as long as people are clear about their positions and they don't try to murk the waters just because they want to, you know, stir the pot a little bit and piss people off. That's that's silly. So, um I kind of wanted to, to say, I think that the best thing to do is just vote for whoever you think is the best candidate, whether you even believe that candidate will win or not, okay? It's not about picking the winner. This is not a contest to see who can who can pick the winner uh, of, of the political election, right? And I hesitate to say it's, it, is a, it is a popularity contest, which is kind of silly, but we should be determining our 
presidential nominees and our elected officials, those that represent us, based upon their platform. What do they stand for? What are their morals? What do they see as the direction of the country? What are they going to do in order to lead the country? That should be our criteria for determining who we're going to vote for, not whether or not they are the opposed person to the person I don't like. So I'm not going to vote for a candidate just because I hate the other one more. That's a silly way to do it. And it's funny because this particular election season, it's even more like that. Uh, there is, for both candidates, both of the candidates, representatives of the two major political parties, there is more dislike than like for both of them. More people dislike Hillary Clinton than like her. More people dislike Donald Trump than like him. So if more people dislike them, and, and I even saw another fascinating thing, and I, I don't remember the percentages, but I think it's something like less than 5% of the American population even voted for either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump in the primary selection process. So that's not very many people. The 5% of the American population that determined who our top two candidates would be, that's really, ugh. I mean, democracy is not perfect. I know it's in my opinion, it's the best worst system we've got. But uh, that seems like, you know, if, if you've got an opinion, if you're part of the other 95% of the people that don't want either of these two people, then maybe you should consider voting for someone else. Because there are other parties out there. There are other political processes or political systems, uh, not political systems, but there are other political parties that have different platforms and different, uh, different standings. So don't be afraid to vote for them. I understand you're, you're worried that, you know, if I don't vote for one or the other, then the other person's going to win. And I don't want that person to win most of all. And that's the prevailing theory. But this is one of the most frustrating things. And one of the most frustrating concepts in the world to me is the self-fulfilling prophecy. The stock market has it right? Where, you know, stocks go up and down simply because people believe that something is worth more or less than, you know, than it was the other day. And, and the more people that believe this way or that way changes the stock price. So it's a, a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. If everybody believes this, then it is. But if everybody believes something else, then it is that way. The same thing with, I think the housing market was in a very similar situation back in the uh, in the 2000s, where to me, it seems silly that property values, I'm, I mean, I've never quite understood this, where property values go up despite things getting older. I don't know of too many other products that get, that, that uh, are worth more as they get older. Uh, there's a few things. Jewelry is one, you know, especially certain types of jewelry. They can definitely, uh, you know, get, you know, uh, grow in their, um, uh, their worth, their you know, their worth the value of that particular item, as time goes on. But typically, the newer something is, the more expensive it is, and the more valuable it is. And the older it gets, the less valuable it is. And that's not saying anything about like people or something. This is just property. So you know, property values for house the housing market seems a little odd to me that as the value the property gets older, that somehow it gets worth more. It just seems a little strange to me, but it is what it is because we as a society decide that this is the property value and it's not based upon anything other than what everybody else thinks it's worth, right? It doesn't matter what I think it wor it's worth. It matters what everybody thinks it's worth. So this whole self-fulfilling prophecy has really led us to this two-party system. It's amazing how many people will say, I hate both candidates. I hate the two-party system. I wish that there was someone better. Are you going to vote third party? No, 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 no. I can't do that. I can't allow for the other person to win. Well, you're just self, you know, you're just creating the same system that you don't like. You're not willing to take the step that is required in order for that system to change. And as long as you are not willing to make that change, then how can you confirm or how can you convince other people to do the same? So I'm talking to you on behalf of somebody who is going to vote for a third party. And in fact, to drive this home, to drive this point home, I'm going to quote two 
very famous political people. Uh, one of them was a founding father of the United States of America, and the other one was his son. So John Adams uh, very famously said, there is nothing which I dread so much as a division of the Republic into two great parties, each arranged under its leader and concerted measures in, a, in opposition to each other. This, in my humble apprehension, is to be dreaded as the greatest political evil under our Constitution. That was John Adams, regarded as one of the primary um, founding fathers, not just somebody that just signed off on the Declaration of Independence, but actually was one of the main conspirators in the foundation of the United States of America. And he had major reservations, as well as some of the other founding fathers, that there would be a two-party system. Uh, George Washington also had some comments about this as well, but not quite as clear and distinct as what I think John Adams' quote puts together. Now, his son, John Quincy Adams, he also has a pretty famous quote, uh, always vote for principle, though you may vote alone, and you may cherish the sweetest reflection that your vote is never lost. And I think that's very, very poignant. If you vote your conscience, if you vote for the person or the candidate or candidates that you truly believe should be leading in your country, that is the most important way that you can use your vote, not just for, you know, not just for self-satisfaction, but because of, I think we need this diversity in, in the marketplace of politics. And it seems to me that if we as Americans, most Americans, believe that capitalism breeds good competition, which breeds good results or better results, right? We get better products and we get better pricing through competition. If you have a monopoly or even one or two major players in a particular market share, it tends to lead to worse products and uh, less innovation and higher prices. I mean, you can look at just about any utility that's out there. Um, you know, your, your power that's being produced or your cable that's being uh, given, you know, that you can purchase, you know, you pretty much either have cable or you have satellite, and those are your only two options. And is anybody really happy with their satellite or cable provider? Uh, I mean, and even to a certain extent, I think cell phones, you know, they have a pretty predominant market share between AT&T and Verizon, but there's, of course, there's Sprint and there's, there's some others like Cricket, which helps to give a bit more of a competition and does give you a bit more of a chance of having some sort of satisfaction with the company that you that you decide to go with for your cell phone. But even then, still the limited number of companies is often leading to higher prices and really not everybody is really all that happy with their cell phone service provider. So we need a diversity in the marketplace. But somehow when it comes to politics, we don't believe that. Somehow when it comes to politics, we must have the two parties because if we don't vote with the one party, then the other party will win but we don't create any diversity with this. We don't create any marketplace of ideas where different people can then go and decide which one of those ideals and principles that they wish to, to join with the most, right? So I think that um, we really need to start focusing more on allowing ourselves to be free of this two-party system. And the only way you can do that is by allowing yourself to vote for someone other than somebody who belongs to the two parties. Sorry, my cell phone's go or my phone's going off here. So um, I think that that probably pretty much sums up my position on the two different political, the two party system. If you live in a country that already has multiple parties, you probably feel a little bit more comfortable with your with your political system, you probably feel a little bit better about your government because you feel like you have a bit more freedom of choice. But here in America, it just feels like a fruitless effort, you know, and, and if you do tell people that you're going to vote for a third party, uh, then you tend to get knocked down and told you, you know, told that your vote is worthless, uh, that, you know, you're, you need to vote for along with me and, and this bigger party because we can't let the other side win. And I just think that that's a shame because the only way that we're ever going to fix this country, and, and I do believe it needs fixing, is by granting some other party some sort of political power because it can then broker 
the correct solution. It can broker the correct res resolution to any sort of one of these conflicts. And instead of it being a black and white situation where you either are for or against something, perhaps there's a middle ground that can be brokered by that third party or fourth or fifth party. And until we allow ourselves to do that, until we allow ourselves and tell ourselves that it's okay, that you know what, it's more important right now in this moment to create this third party system for the future than it is for me to vote against someone else. Okay, that to me, I think is, is far more patriotic and much more important to think about the long term proposition of what's going to happen with our country than to try to satisfy our immediate need right now for disallowing or permitting one particular candidate over another. It's more important that you vote your conscience for who you think will be the best leader for this country. So there you guys go. I know this is probably going to generate quite a few comments, uh, and please feel free to drop me those comments in the comment section below this video. And if you have another question or a comment, you just kind of want to pick my brain, you want me to do another In My Opinion video on some other topic. And I say typically it can be a topic anything under the sun, but really it could be about Alpha Centauri be or the brightest star in our sky, Vega. Uh, you know, if, if you want to talk about something else, uh, you can certainly go ahead and bring that question up to me. And if I've got a good response and I want to make a video of it, I certainly will. So thank you guys so much for watching. And please, I hope to see you guys in the next video. And like I said, if you do have some comments, and I'm sure some of you do have something to say, especially those of you who are in other countries, foreign countries that are kind of outside looking in at this uh, at the American politics. I'd really like to hear from you guys, so please do. Oh, and I mentioned, uh, I'm gonna tell you guys who I voted for, right? right? <laughs> so before you guys go away, I wanted to let you know, I will be voting for Daryl Castle, who is a member of the Constitution Party because I have joined the Constitution Party. So that's who I am going to vote for is Mr. Daryl Castle. So there you guys go. If you guys, again, have any more comments or questions about who that guy is, please feel free to drop me a comment in the comment section below. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and a happy election day. And I hope that uh, may the best man or woman win. And until the next video, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.